Buying any type of home is a very exciting process, especially if it's your first home. But what happens when you move in and life in that new home is not exactly what you were expecting. Hey everybody, Melanie Atkinson here, Realtor with Smith & Associates in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. And today I wanna to talk about some of the issues that new homeowners can get overwhelmed by right after closing. Kinda of takes away the fun of a new house. So I'm going to start off this topic by introducing you all to my new puppy, Tucker. He is absolutely the cutest and best puppy ever. I could not love him more. I have owned dogs before, so when I got him, I thought I was pretty prepared for the reality of living with a new puppy. And for the most part, I have been. But just like with any big transition in life, there are going to be bumps in the road and pee stains on your carpet. And that's why I'm introducing you to Tucker. Getting a new puppy is a lot like buying a new home. There's a lot of anticipation and excitement in the beginning, but once that wears off, you have to be willing to put in the time and effort that it takes to work through those initial challenges in order to raise up a puppy right or make your new house a home. As a new homeowner, you want that house to be perfect as soon as possible. But making your new house feel like your home takes a lot of time, money, and patience. What I see with some new buyers is that once this reality kicks in, they have what I call new homeowner letdown. You go from the excitement of being a home buyer to the reality of being a homeowner, and sometimes these responsibilities can be a bit overwhelming. But don't worry, I'm here to help you. Here are a few things to be prepared for as you purchase your new home so you can try to avoid the disappointment of homeowner letdown. Warning, your new house might be really dirty. In the state of Florida, if you are purchasing a resale house, the seller of that house is not legally required to professionally clean the house when they transfer it to you, unless you have negotiated that professional cleaning into your contract. A lot of sellers are fantastic and they do actually have the house professionally cleaned for you, but a lot of them don't and it will be your very first job as a new homeowner to clean up that house. And sometimes the extent of the cleaning can be a little stomach churning. One thing I notice more than anything is that once a seller's furniture is gone, there can be a lot of discoloration in the floors, especially with carpet and tile grout. Now, when you're first looking at a house, pay attention to these cleanliness issues and see if you might run across issues with dirty grout or carpet not being the same color once the furniture is moved. If you think you're going to have a lot of flooring issues or other general cleanliness issues on the house that you wanna buy, then make sure you adequately budget for these or maybe try to get a professional cleaning service into the contract. You may have to repaint more than you think. In certain areas of the country, it is customary or maybe even required for sellers to patch and paint areas of the walls that have been damaged due to screws or nails. But in the Tampa Bay area, it is not required and is not really customary either. Why? Because some homeowners try their best to patch and paint these holes and end up making more of a mess than they would have had if they just left them. They end up patching poorly or they use old paint with the wrong finish and it's just a mess. So most of the time the sellers will just leave the screws and the nails in the walls and it's up to you as the new homeowner to decide whether you wanna take them out and patch them yourselves or use them. But sometimes this can lead into a much bigger painting project than you were anticipating. So what can you do about it? A lot of how I answer that question depends on how you feel about the color of the walls when you buy the house. If you do like the color and the paint is fairly new and it's in a finish that's easily retouchable, then hopefully the seller has a little extra paint and that makes the project very easy. However, if you're already planning on painting, then you don't really have to worry about it because those holes will get patched up as you paint your interior rooms. Either way, don't panic when you go to your walkthrough and you see that there's a bunch of screws and nails left in the wall. You might even end up being really grateful that they're there if they happen to be in the same place that you wanna put your pictures. Your AC will absolutely break in the first month that you live there. Okay, I might be exaggerating a bit here, but I can't tell you how many times an air conditioner has broken in the first few months that a new home buyer has lived in their house. If it isn't the AC, it will be something else. Homes are full of things that break and need to be maintained. When things break soon after closing, buyers have a tendency to get very upset with their home inspector or the seller because they feel like they should have known this or it should have been disclosed. 
If the new homeowner gets really upset, this can really evolve into a tricky legal situation, the details of which I'm not going to get into right now. In my experience, most of the things that break right after closing are just normal things that break and they are your responsibility to fix once you've closed on that house. So how do you protect yourself? First, hire a highly recommended home inspector. I have never met a perfect home inspector because they're human, but I have met some that are a lot better than others. Second, if a home warranty is something that would make you feel more comfortable, talk to your agent about getting one of those either when you're negotiating the contract or after you close. You can purchase those as a homeowner at any time. The coverages will vary and there's a lot of different companies that offer them, so do your research. Your neighbors might end up being terrible. If you have visions of co-hosting summer barbecues with your new best friends next door, you might wanna adjust your expectations. Most neighbors don't become your best friend and that might actually be a good thing. You definitely want your neighbors to maintain their yard, you want them to be friendly without being intrusive, and you can only hope that you have that great neighbor with all the tools that you don't have and he or she knows how to use them. If you're moving into a big neighborhood, chances are your friends are out there. They might not just be next door. My advice to you is to go to the community events, go down to the community pool, or just be on your driveway outside and people will come by. If you happen to get a downright unfriendly or loud neighbor, that can be a huge letdown for you. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole bunch that you can do about it except for stay out of their way and report them to the proper authorities if their behavior warrants. Driving around the neighborhood prior to purchasing and talking to the people that already live there could be helpful in avoiding those bad neighbors, but you can't always rely on strangers to give you that information. It's definitely a tricky one. And finally, furnishing and decorating is a marathon, not a sprint. Making a house a home takes time, lots of it. But a lot of buyers don't expect that and they want it to feel like their home too quickly. They get frustrated with the boxes piled up in the corners and the furniture deliveries taking too long. It can be a real letdown during those first couple of months. I totally get the frustration, but the wait is usually worth it. And don't worry if you have some rooms that go without furniture for a while. You need time to get to know your house and you need to figure out how you're going to live in your home. Decorate and furnish the rooms that are the most important ones when you first move in and wait on the rest of them. Try to make those decorating and furnishing goals realistic and then you won't get as frustrated. <laughs> So Tucker's back now to remind everybody to be prepared, knowledgeable, and realistic when you're moving into your new home. Yes, it will be frustrating at times, and yes, it will be exhausting at times. Trust me, I do not enjoy 3 a.m. potty time with Tucker, but that's life with a puppy. Life with a new house is much the same and it will all be worth it in the end. Thank you everybody for watching and please remember if you're looking to buy or sell a Sala house in the Tampa Bay area to give me a call or send me a text. Thanks again, with love, Melanie and Tucker.